Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Four score and seven years ago, hackers broke into the government and critical infrastructure. It's the other white meat. These stories and much more on today's episode of MSP Dispatch. This episode is presented by MSP GeekCon 2023, a conference for MSPs by MSPs. Occurring May 21st through the 23rd, 2023 in Orlando, Florida, this two-day event is built around the journey of technical growth from Tier 1 to Tier 3. Visit mspgeekcon.com for more information. Good morning and welcome to the March 10th episode of MSP Dispatch, your source for news, community events, and commentary in the MSP channel. I'm Ray Orsini, joined as always by my co-host, Mr. Tony Francisco. How are you doing, Tony? Excellent, brother. Excellent. I'm in the yellow. It's beautiful out. Uh, I've almost died from pollen here in Tampa, Florida. But other than the uh, literally getting my car washed every single day because it's just a yellow blanket of stuff on my car, it is gorgeous. How are you doing? I'm pretty fantastic. Uh, I'm not bad. Uh, I have. So when you say you're in the yellow, you take one of these and you go like, yellow? Is that my <laughs> Oh my gosh! It's cool. Where do you so get? This, this is one of my LED lights that uh that we use for the tech bar set, and uh, completely remote controllable, so we can make it you know make sure you're yellow and good to go. Uh, I'm I'm in the yellow on my 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 audio my audio, uh, but I'm also in the yellow with pollen, and but I like that yellow better because it's not as hurtful. But I like watching. Yeah, you know what else is yellow? Uh, speaking of. Uh, uh, my car is yellow, covered in all the pollen. It's, uh, yeah, it's not pretty. Uh, so speaking of doubles, I was, and I apologize for the horrible segue, but we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Something like also yellow double, and that's the best I got. They can't all be gold. Uh, all right, so found this um, found this article called body doubling. Have you heard of this uh, this new trend? Mm, do tell. All right, so. A lot of people, the majority, especially in our industry, the majority of people are work from home or work from anywhere. Uh, they miss that sense of community. They miss that sense of working next to somebody else to hold themselves accountable. Um, there is something to be said for that, besides all the freedoms you get working from home and all the other uh, work-life balance benefits. But apparently body doubling, um, or apparently like this lack of community is especially tearing on people with ADHD. Uh, I'm also not only a president, also a client. Um, and if you get that reference, you're really old like us. Uh, but, you know, apparently for people with ADHD, they're really struggling with this. So um, this young woman found uh, she started doing live streams of just her sitting working. Um, just she'll do a TikTok live stream. She works as a freelance creative uh and she works you know eight nine hours a day she'll get in at nine o'clock work for an hour start streaming on tiktok other people will start following her she'll stop every once in a while start answering questions uh but apparently this is a big trend now where people will just get on and watch other people work in the background while they work just so they feel someone else is holding them accountable i i okay so i am going to say my opinion after I say, I talk about my hypocrisy. So um, in 1995, dating myself there, when, if anyone remembers the Netscape browser, um, came out and I was programming in uh, HTML, I think they came out like 2.0, like that's a framework. Um, I issued a, I had a website, I got my domain at tonyfrancisco.com and and I had something called a uh, Tony Talk, which was back then a blog. It's like one of the first ever blogs. And I would blog every single week on Mondays. Here's what happened on the weekend. Here's what happened. And then I put a JavaScript uh, in there that refreshed a camera picture every five minutes because the bandwidth, which is, by the way, was a dial up. I just want to point that out uh, from my apartment. Uh, and then it went to every minute. Um, and then it went to about every 30 seconds, which, I mean, webcams have come a long way since then. Um, the amount of traffic I had going to that was fascinating. So let's set that aside. 
why would people just want to watch somebody? I don't understand. <laughs> okay. So yes, going back into our old, old age, sitting on like a team speak server or sitting on, you know, just having voice play and people do it now in discord. I see it all the time, especially on the MMN discord join. If you haven't joined, um, but there's voice channels there and I find people in there all the time, just hanging out and I'll join to see what's going on. Cause you know, I'm a little FOMO and they're just hanging out. Like it's the weirdest thing to me. Um, but I, I get it. I get it. Um, people miss that. I, yeah. I do want to know like of our MSP audience, if you do this, um, I know our devs do this also, like they sit in a voice chat and they just hang out all day. Um, if you do this and there's an appeal to you, I'd love to get somebody that's doing this on a regular basis and actually talk about their experiences. So hit us up in the chat, hit us up on Discord, uh, and let's uh, let's talk about it. But for now, let's uh, let's do some new stuff, man. We're going straight from doubles, body doubling, body doubles to bubbles, straight from every dot two as in to ai is looking like a bubble bubbles are when people buy too much dumb stuff because they think that there's someone dumber than them that they can sell it to that's what a bubble is and let's just be honest it came from the article and i love that exactly my point <laughs> we want to and be very clear it came from the article these are not tony's words <laughs> they may be some of my words, but, but they really mostly came from the article. Uh, there's even a reference to the trend uh, that can, or I'm sorry, any reference to any of these trends that happen can have a huge impact. In 2017, Bitcoin and blockchain were key words, and even saying them had power. The most telling example was Long Island Ice Tea, which had a market value of, a market cap of 23.8 million. The company name is Long Island Ice Tea. It announced that they were changing their name to, quote, Long Blockchain Corp. Long Island Ice Tea went to Long Blockchain Corp from a uh, market cap of 23.8 million, and it saw its stock boom by 183% in one day. In pre market reading, it had ridden, risen over 500%. Sources have said that OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, their newest $29, point, uh, $29 billion valuation is off of less than $50 million in revenue. And the PL was not available to confirm this. Investors don't know where the value from AI will settle. So they're just kind of throwing capital at everything. And Ray, let's talk about this because all we hear every day, all day is chat GPT. And then our reply to that is something that we put ironically into chat GPT. And then we reply with in a very articulate, charismatic fashion. What are your thoughts on this? Is AI a bubble? You know, having been through the housing bubble, the tech bubble, the crypto bubble, it, it's... And there's other bubbles. These are just the bubbles and bubblicious, you know, um, these are just the bubbles that, that off the top of my head, but I think there's real value here. Um, but yes, I, I don't disagree that it's people are throwing AI at anything and everything possible. Right. Um, that, you know, looking at, uh, but then I look at good examples. Like I saw a video from get thread, uh, thread is an MSP vendor. Um, and I'll put the link in the show notes where, they automated the conversation back and, forth, back and forth of the client. That was the tech and the human. That was a real conversation. And then AI was used once they were done to pull all the data from the ticket and make the time entry with just the relevant details. So we're not using AI to talk to the human. We're using human interaction for that. We're using AI for the administrative functions. Um, I love that. I, I think that's freaking great. Uh, but on the other hand, I've seen a lot of AI examples that are just really, really poor examples. Maybe if you watch Tech Bar, you saw us using ChatGPT to make drinks. That's a poor example. <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny. You know, I, and and the the whole bubble premise is just like tech has value, housing has value, crypto has value. Oh wait, no, it doesn't. Wait, it's back. Wait, it has value. Okay, we'll move on. Um, but just like those other bubbles, there is value. There is base value to these things. We're just trying to figure out where the true value is. 
And yes, I do think there will be a bubble, and I think it'll pop. I don't think it'll be as severe as the other bubbles. Um, crypto is just a get rich quick thing. You know, people went absolutely bonkers and lost a ton of money. Housing people were over leveraging themselves. Tech VCs were just over investing into bubble into tech uh, where there was nothing there. Um, if that's happening now, I, I I don't think this one will be as severe because it's at the same time as an oncoming recession. And I think that will force it to be balanced out. Very well said. Maybe. Very well said. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, no, I, I think if, if we really look at the geometry of AI and any particular bubble, um, you can see very clearly that it is not well-rounded. It's very oblong. And in the case of AI, since there really isn't a defined, um, hardened definition of AI and the use, the best use of AI, because AI in all degrees have been used forever. We're just now seeing it to, hey, this is an actually out of the box, you know, ready, self-actuating value that can occur, but people are still using it in a very poor way over here. I think it's going to turn into something better than it currently is. But um, uh, we see this every day in companies where, hey, uh, that that uh, came from West Spencer. I love that picture of the the, the leaking, uh, the leak, uh, that leak that's coming out of the wall. And, and, and it says, hey, here's a, a company that's losing market share. And then the next picture is the CEO slapping chat GPT on it. Look at that. We just made, we made our product better because it's got chat GPT and AI. Um, I'm really interested to see how this plays out and um, what you know what the the MSP community is using it for. If there's any some any serious value that's outside of what we see today, I mean, I, other than just just making your emails better. Um, we should probably move on to the next story. Uh, I'm interested to see how things are going to work with AI and all of the investigations that are going to be uh, bettered from AI. And I heard that there are some other investigations out there, Ray. See, that was a much better segue than my segue into the, uh, <laughs> the body double. <laughs> So taking on that, Tony's absolutely right. And this actually may be a place for, for AI. In my second top story in security, FBI investigates data breach impacting U.S. House members and staff. Written by Sergio Gatlan for Bleeping Computer. The FBI is investigating a data breach that has exposed the account and sensitive personal information of U.S. House members, staff, and their families who use DC HealthLink for their health care plans. Affected individuals were notified of their breach in an email from Catherine Sivendor, the U.S. House Chief Administrative Officer. While the email didn't contain any details regarding the stolen data, it was discovered that at least one threat actor was selling the stolen information on a hacking forum. A sample of the stolen data shows it contains the information of roughly 170,000 individuals, including names, dates of birth, addresses, email addresses, phone numbers, and social security numbers. The threat actor claims that the stolen information has already been sold to at least one buyer. NBC News reported that on March 9th, that two House leaders sent a letter to the head of the D.C. Health Benefit Exchange Authority stating that the FBI had purchased some of the stolen information. No further details were provided about the purchase, nor of the information that was attained by the FBI. Uh, Tony, I, okay, so I was only half joking. I do think that like when in part of forensics and part of incident response, you go through enormous blobs of text and logs and stuff like that. This is exactly, if AI can pull de relevant details from a ticket to make ticket at notes, it could definitely do something like this. So I, appropriate application, but let's back up because that's not the story. The story is womp womp, new security breach for the US House of Representatives um, for HealthLink. And to, the, to Sergio's credit, and we got to give Sergio because we use a lot of his articles here on the show, he didn't minimize uh, the, the data that was stolen. And you know, to, to the chief admin officer, she didn't minimalize it either. She didn't say, well, it was, you know, it was un, unidentifiable information and it wasn't sensitive. No, no, they got your socials. They, they, they got the important stuff. <laughs> you know, Tony, when is this going to stop? This is ridiculous. Um, I don't know the answer to that other than even if we plug one hole up in this leaking dam of, uh, we'll just call it information and the exploitation of information. Um, 
there's another crack that's going to be exploited and and and, and created in some capacity in some other location that we did not anticipate. Um, but coming back to your your point of can't we just take this information, plug it into ChatGPT, and say, hey, do X with this? The answer is absolutely that can happen, which goes back into the first story about the use of open AI, or uh, yeah, I'm sorry, about AI in general, and open AI's ChatGPT is one of many of the sources out there that's evolving this very quickly. So this goes back to when we first discussed LastPass and how the source code um, was uncovered, discovered um, in LastPass, and everyone says, oh, nothing can, uh, nothing can occur from that. And I said, listen, <laughs> I know how hacking works firsthand. I know exactly what I would do with that source code in GitHub and, and find and exploit those small, subtle joints. Um, and fast forward, I think it was like six months later, if not longer, we started seeing, hey, there could be a hack three months later. Wow. <laughs> I don't I mean, does LastPass even have any business Oops. at this point? Yeah, I, I, I'm well, be, but let, let's be honest, this enormous trove of information was uncovered and we just got done discussing how can we put this information in an AI model of some capacity to do X. What is X? Something horrible? Well, now it's very possible. It's very much in reach. And so which goes ironically back to your question of what can we do to stop this? Will this ever stop? No, I think it's gonna get much, much, much worse before it's going to get better. And that is what terrifies me. Thanks for the good news, Tony. I appreciate that. <laughs> Just say, well, it's job security for us. This is a no, way to keep talking about it. This is why so many people in IT want to get out of and go into farming or like into raising animals or literally anything else without a power switch. <laughs> like, which is ironic because if you look at some of the some of the farms, they have some amazing technology. Uh, I, you know, when you're looking at like dairy farm and stuff like that. But at least, but at least. You know, we know healthcare is the preferred attack vector for hackers, right? Like, we only have to protect healthcare, right, Tony? Going straight into the next story. I didn't even see that one coming, but yes, <laughs> straight from darkreading.com. Ransomware's favorite target, critical infrastructure and its industrial control systems. The national defense and security experts long predicted that the future war of warfare would not be waged by firearms, but by the code designed to disable services people depend on daily. In May of 2021, security experts' worst fear came true when a ransomware attack struck Colonial Pipeline. Gas delivered to most of the US Northeast halted almost overnight. With each successful attack, ransomware groups are now growing bolder and target industries that cause the most pain to exploit the crisis for maximum extortion. Healthcare, energy, and manufacturing are critical targets. So going back to the question, Ray, what can we do to protect ourselves? Um, people are saying, hey, I want to get out of the MSP role and I want to go do X. Wow, X is literally the number one target of where I just left, of why I just left. So uh, what, what are your thoughts? Are, am I, is this just going to be a continual rinse and repeat cycle? I have the answer. So you know what a quota is? They're, they're these tiny little like badger looking things. They live on an island. Uh, I can't pronounce the name of the island. It's Rot Nest is the American English uh, version of their islands. Waje Jump is like the proper name. Anyway, there are these tiny little things that on the island, they have no prey and no predator. So when humans go on, not only do they just walk up to humans like you're cool, but they have like, they actually jump into selfies and stuff like they photobomb, right? Um, they also throw their kids at you when you when you get aggressive with them, but that's a whole other thing. But <laughs> who hasn't been there? But um but what you call it? But they have no technology on the island. I think that's where I'm going to go. Um, it goes back to our what was the story we did? Uh, Phil confined it. The one we did one in four CISOs are like out, right? Uh, people are just getting out of out of the industry. Um, you know, I, I just don't know what to do anymore because you're fighting. It feels like you're fighting massive waves, right? You have people like you have the organizations like CompTIA and their trust, their security trust mark uh, that we just announced and we covered with Wayne. Well, pointed out here somewhere, um, Wayne Selk, um, 
and they have that stuff. And you have MSPs that are genuinely working harder to get better security with their vendors and for their clients. And then you have certain clients that are fighting back on, on the security. And then you have these events where we have no input on. We have no input on UC HealthLink. We have no input on like, you know, the the what a colonial pipeline. Like we're not there, but it still affects our lives. So is it like a global warming thing where like do what you can but realize you don't have the power to make giant changes or is this like a, is, is it a group effort or is it going to be like a, is there a singular government that's going to be able to take uh have an impact or is it a group effort of everyone well if if there's something i've learned is that people never look out for themselves and they're always eager to help the felt their fellow person now i i you know i say that half joking i'm an optimist well I'm a realistic pessimist. I'm, no, I'm an optimist. Um, so I understand. I hope that, and I see in the MSP communities, people get together and they help each other. Um, I see that every single day. We were just having conversations about alternatives to multi-factor authentication when using RDG uh, or remote desktop gateway. Um, you know, talking about Duo versus Okta versus other stuff. So the relevant people are helping each other. I think the only real answer is education and awareness. And that doesn't happen in these little microcosms when you're working from home. Maybe we need more of that bodily du body dub uh, doubling. Maybe we need more of that community. We need more of that opportunity to talk to other peers so that it's not just a, forget that I'm having a hard time doing this. Um, I know I'm rambling a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll rein this in. It's like when your parents told you something as a kid and you wouldn't believe anything they said, but then if somebody else said the same thing, then you would you have boys you know this. oh You've been man this you are hitting home with that one that was just a little too sensitive ray that that was that was intentional i could feel it it burn right now oh I'm yeah sorry. <laughs> and so and that and that's the thing like you know maybe this is the case where in community in peer networking when somebody else another realtor another attorney another title agent whatever they're hearing their peers saying yeah this this email encryption thing's a royal pain in the ass but we know we have to do it and it saved our bacon so many times maybe they won't listen to the msp but they'll listen to their colleagues and that'll make it easier on the msp Isn't so that why we're doing the show right now oh to create education and awareness for what's going on in the msp channel what? so maybe one tells another one what <laughs> you know what i think i think that was so amazing that i want to hear more can you let's get get me some notables man bring it on And apparently that's how you lead in yourself when you forget what the order is. So in my first notable mention, Microsoft makes Outlook for Mac free to use, written by Tom Warren for The Verge. Microsoft has made Outlook for Mac available for free on Apple's App Store, and it doesn't require Microsoft 365 subscriptions or Office licenses to use it. The Mac version supports Gmail, iCloud, Yahoo, Outlook.com accounts, and any email provider with IMAP support. It has a user interface optimized for Mac OS and is also optimized for M1 and M2 chips. It features the native notification center support and Mac OS widget for calendar entries. Although there are no plans to update Outlook for Mac to a progressive web app, it doesn't mean that the company won't have updates for it. According to Jeremy Perdue, a product manager for Outlook for Mac, the company is rebuilding Mac Outlook from the ground up to be faster and more reliable. In my second notable mention, vulnerability CVE 20232732 in a Veeam backup and replication component posted on Veeam.com. On March 7th, Veeam published the CVE 2023-27532 on its website. The vulnerability was found in Veeam backup and replication that could allow unauthorized users to access encrypted credentials and gain access to backup infrastructure hosts. The vulnerability was rated as severe with a CVSS V3 score of 7.5. A patch has been released and users are advised to update their systems or block external connections to port TCP 9401 until the patch can be installed. All Veeam backup and replication versions are affected, but new deployments using the ISO images dated 2023-0223 or later are not vulnerable. And my first notable mention from channelfeatures.com, Facebook, Microsoft, and Google are the most targeted by phishing and personalization. Facebook was the top impersonated brand, edging out Microsoft with more than 25,000 uniquely branded phishing websites 
Facebook represented 9% of the total phishing sites from this year's list. Microsoft finished as a runner up for the second year in a row. It represented 9% of all phishing websites, but accounting for nearly 2,000 fewer than Facebook. Like 2021, Microsoft remains the most impersonated brand in the corporate market, according to a report. Google jumped to number three spot with 1,560% year over year growth in phishing pages. This is the second biggest leap among brands to crack the top 20 in this year's report. And in my next notable mention, IceFire ransomware now encrypts both Linux and Windows systems. From leapingcomputer.com, threat actors linked to the IceFire ransomware operation now actively target Linux systems worldwide with a dedicated encryptor. When executed, IceFire ransom encrypts files, appends the dot iFire extension to the file name, and then covers its tracks by deleting and, re and removing the binary. It's also important to note that IceFire doesn't encrypt all files on Linux. The ransomware strategically avoids encrypting specific paths, allowing critical system parts to remain operational. Sentinel Lab says, quote, in comparison to Windows, Linux is more difficult to deploy ransomware against, particularly at scale. Many Linux systems are servers. Typical infection vectors like phishing or drive-by downloads are less effective. In our community feedback section from the YouTubes, Jason Morales says, next time you guys are gonna talk about the bears, please bring Joe Rogan into the podcast. You know, I we've reached out to him several times. Uh, you know, there's a scheduling conflict going on, but we'll work on it, man. We'll work on it for you. And Disco Josh says, the other thing to keep in mind with open source is potentially the lack of support or SLAs. Open source is great, but pretty risky. I couldn't agree more. What's up, y'all? I'm Phil Buck. Welcome to today's AI Roundup. And in a move that it probably surprises no one at this point, yet another software company is slotting AI into their product. I feel like machine learning is the new Oprah. Uh, you get AI. You get AI. Everybody gets AI. In an article from Engadget, Will Shanklin reports on Grammarly expanding beyond proofreading with AI-powered writing. Grammarly is launching a new set of auto-composition features called Grammarly Go to help its AI proofreading software keep up with competitors like Notion and Gmail's Smart Compose. Grammarly Go will be able to use context such as voice, style, purpose, and location to determine its approach and can generate email replies, shorten passages, rewrite them for tone and clarity, brainstorm, or choose from one-click prompts. The feature will be included with the Grammarly service at no extra cost and will soon be added to all of its plans. The beta of Grammarly Go will begin rolling out in April. Are you using AI technologies in your workflow? If so, tell us about it in the MMN Discord. We might even have you come talk about it on my new show, AI Roundup. That's right, in case you missed it, AI Roundup is now its own show, releasing once a week on Wednesday. And you can check out the first episode by clicking that card right up there at the top of the video, or the link is in the show notes for our podcast listeners. And that's it for AI Roundup today. Let's check out some community events. There are plenty of amazing upcoming events taking place across the community, so let's see what's happening this week. March 13th through the 15th, an in-person event, CompTIA Communities and Councils Forum in Chicago, Illinois. Also on March 15th at 12 p.m. Eastern, Build a Better MSP Discussion Group presented by Everything MSP. And on March 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Practice Makes Perfect, How to Run a Tabletop Exercise presented by Huntress. And coming from the MSP Media Network this week, we have, in case you missed it, Technical Deficit Episode 7, Solving the Top 5 Cyber Drain Sys Admin CTF Challenges with Kevin Teglar. On March 16th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, the Tech Bar Podcast Episode 54 with Emilio Garcia of Tier 2 Technologies. And of course, on Tuesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, MSP Dispatch presented by the MSP Media Network. Hey, I'm Powerhouse Ray. And I'm Super Cousin Danny. And we're the hosts of The, the Tech, Tech Bar. Bar. Pull up a stool with us every other Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern for drinks, jokes, and games with your friends in the MSP channel.
So how'd you like today's episode? If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, go and hit it three times. And if you want to hear more, go and hit that subscribe button on the YouTubes or your favorite podcatcher. Did you know we also have a Discord where we post stories all week? You can propose your own stories and even vote on which ones we'll cover. As my friend Rich Banky says, make sure to tell a friend. Also, be sure to follow us on social media at MSP Media TV. Have any questions? Email news at mspmedia.tv for answers on the next episode or leave us a voicemail, 833 MSP Network. All right, Tony. We've talked about breaches. We talked about bubbles. I'll give Phil a chance to put a bubble on the screen like he did last time. Boop. <laughs> and my favorite, we talked about quokas. Check out these cute little bastards. Look at this. They love selfies. And they're like this big. Now imagine they throw their babies at you when they're scared. Like so little little flurf balls. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. They throw their like, babies at you when they're scared? Yes. That that is exactly what happens. It, it is, took me a while yes. to click that in. Yeah. Now imagine that half of the size of that or quarter, because it's a baby being launched at you. And it's yeah. It's it's yeah. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you like news, if you like MSP, if you like quokas and other cute animals that react in ridiculous ways, just hang out with us on Discord and meet us up next week. We'll be at CompTIA CCF. Uh, but for now, take care of yourselves and each other. Be safe, everyone. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network. I don't hear the noise at all right now. What about when I talk? Do you hear the noise? I think right there you're perfect. No, I don't. That yeah, was it does sound good. Right. Phil, stay on. Don't leave. It's say, like yeah, when you, me. <laughs> you get the IT guy and you say something's wrong and all of a sudden it's no longer wrong. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> Nobody touched the printers. Nobody changed paper. We're getting this done. <laughs> Glad I could okay. help. Uh, my, top second, uh, my top story in security, FBI investigates data breach impacting U.S. members of House. Let me do that again. And I'm reading it right. I'm just words are backwards. All right. FBI. This also goes back even further to when we first discussed the last pass conversation. Um, oh, I heard yeah, that. I know. Yeah. I yeah. I know. I know. I know. I sorry. Sorry. I listen. No, listen. You say last pass, and I hear you know howling in the back. That I'm going to say Microsoft finishes a runner up for only second in a. Mm, let me repeat that. Uh, it's also important to note that IceFire does encrypt all files in Linux. The ransomware strategically avoids encrypting specific paths, allowing critical... That's where I that with friction. This is my pre-production juice. Also known as vodka. I'm, I'm totally kidding. Here we go. Um, <laughs>